Hi everyone and happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. I hope you get spoiled today. You deserve it. And I hope that you're all still staying safe and staying smart. Please keep washing your hands and wearing your masks. It's healthy and it's respectful of others. And if we start slacking on the rules now, a second wave of this virus is going to hit us harder than the first. So please remain vigilant. I wanted to thank so many of you for participating in our e-auction each week. We're having a lot of fun with it and so many wonderful items have been donated so far. Please let Bob Hudson know if you want to donate something for the auction as well. And don't forget this week's items, a great drill set and six dozen homemade cookies. You still have time to bid. So my winning bid got me these bags of homemade ravioli, and you can be a winner too. Thanks, Bruce. It's been a busy time around Thamesview, even though we're not there physically. The sanctuary is looking beautiful, and the newest project is the flooring and the carpet, and that's well underway. Um, there were a group of five that gathered last Saturday to take it up and yes the property committee would love it if you want to make a contribution to the cost maybe consider oh, I don't know covering the cost of a few square feet of carpet or the cost of shining up the wood in one of the aisles believe me it is going to look so wonderful and we're gonna enjoy it all the more when we can meet together again here's Scott Kemp to share a little bit of what's happening there Hi. Uh, apparently I'm supposed to tell everybody what's happening here at uh, Thamesview United Church. Um, right now we're in, there's a crew of five because you're not, you know, we're, we're keeping it within reason. A uh, crew of five of us taking up some carpet. We're going to pull up all the carpet. We're going to refinish the, uh, the floors so that they have a nice new shine to them. And then we're going to put the carpet back down into the, the same aisles that, uh, that we had in the past. So uh, give us some time, it'll look beautiful and it'll go along great with the paint that's uh, already up on the walls, it looks great. Thanks, see you soon. Good morning everyone. The first scripture reading is taken from Psalm 119. You're blessed when you stay on course, walking steadily on the road revealed by God. You're blessed when you follow God's direction doing your best to find him. You, holy God, prescribe the right way to live. Now you expect us to live it. Oh, that my steps may be steady, keeping to the course you set. I'm going to do what you tell me to do. Don't ever walk away and leave me. How can a young person live a good life? By carefully reading the map of your word. Bless me, God. Train me in your ways and your wise living. I'll transfer to my lips all the counsel that comes from your mouth. I delight far more in what you tell me about living than in gathering a pile of riches. I'll ponder every morsel of wisdom from you, and I attentively watch and follow your example. I relish everything you've told me of life, and I won't forget a word. The second reading comes from 1 Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 to 17. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs of the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. This ends the scriptures. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Nancy. 
A mother was out walking with her four-year-old daughter and the child picked something up off the ground and started to put it in her mouth. And of course, the mother took it away and said, don't do that. Why not? Asked the child. Well, because it was on the ground, said the mother. You don't know where it's been. It's dirty. It's probably loaded with germs that could make you sick. The child looked at her mother in total admiration and said, Mommy, how do you know all this stuff? You're so smart. The mom said, all moms know this stuff. It's on the mom's test. You have to know it or they don't let you be a mom. There was a moment of silence as the child thought this through. Oh, I get it, she said at last. And if you don't pass the test, you have to be the daddy. <laughs> Just a few funnies for Father's Day. Like the woman who wrote a magazine to tell about an event that occurred in her family when she was about 18 months old. She said her mother was out and her father was left in charge of her and her brother, who was four. Someone had given her a little tea set and it was one of her favorite toys. Her dad was in the living room reading the paper and her brother was playing nearby. When the little girl brought her dad a little cup of make-believe tea, which was just plain water. After several cups of this tea and a lot of praise from dad for making such a yummy drink, the little girl's mom came home. Dad made mom wait in the living room to watch this 18 month old bring him a cup of tea because it was just the cutest thing. Her mom waited and sure enough, the little girl came down the hall with a cup of tea for daddy. Mom watched dad drink this special tea and then asked, did it ever occur to you that the only place your baby girl can reach to get the water is from the toilet? <laughs> well, welcome to this unique Father's Day 2020. As someone said, Father's Day is just like Mother's Day, except the gift is cheaper. That's often true. But you know, there are some fine dads in our congregation and we want to honor them. After all, it's not easy being a dad. Right now, it's not easy being any parent. Kids are getting bored, struggling with schoolwork, and so are the parents. Kids are wanting to play outside again with friends and go to the park, go to the beach, go on vacation. Parents are juggling work and homemaking and teaching, being a partner and a playmate and a perfect parent. So let me take a moment today and encourage you parents. And thank you. You're doing a great job. Please don't feel you have to do it all. If the only schooling you're doing with your kids is to read to them every day and have some playtime, you're doing enough. Your job is to parent just parent. Colossians 3.21 says, parents don't come down too hard on your children or you'll crush their spirits. Be parents who aren't afraid to admit that you can't do everything and you don't know everything. Lighten up. Try to focus on what's truly important for you to teach right now. Honesty, patience, respect, kindness, Titus 2, 7 says, but mostly show them all this by doing it yourself. Maybe it's time to lighten up on yourselves as well. Curb your impatience, find some fun, appreciate the creativity and individuality of your children and show them your love and your commitment to God through how you talk and how you act. Teach them your faith. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, it says, Write these commandments that I have given to you on your hearts. Get them inside of you and then get them inside of your children. Talk about them wherever you are, sitting at home or walking in the street. Talk to them from the time you get up in the morning to when you fall into bed at night. Wondering what to tell your children and your grandchildren? Tell them the stories of the Bible of people like us who were afraid or lost or in trouble. Those people who God helped and saved. Tell them the stories of people who were brave or gifted, who served God as young people or as old people, who built an ark, who survived being in a pit with lions, who led a whole nation of people out of slavery, who was swallowed by a great fish, 
who had food delivered by ravens, who caught fish for a living, who wrote great inspirational letters from prison about who had a baby in a barn. Tell the stories of Jesus who healed and cried and laughed and loved. Even if you don't have children around you, read these stories. Pick up the Bible or just Google the stories online and read about people just like us who went through hard times and isolation and loss and restoration and renewal and hope and joy. Psalm 78 verse 2 says, Stories we heard from our fathers and counsel we learned from our mothers, these are the foundation stones of our faith. We are not to keep them to ourselves. We're to pass these truths along to the next generation of God's might and glorious power and the marvelous things God has done. Be a good dad this week and love your kids. Be a great dad this week and show the love of God to your kids so that they in turn will do the same. Be a faithful believer this week. Take some time to study the scriptures. Let it become real in your heart and in your life. You'll learn a lot about yourself and more importantly, you'll learn a lot about the God who loves us unconditionally and eternally. Amen. Happy Father's Day. I hope that all you fathers and father figures out there are having a chance to get together with family and loved ones and celebrate the day. And I think about the song that I'd like to do with you. It's called This Is God's Wondrous World. And uh, it talks about how God we God has revealed in nature. And I hope you've had a chance with the, within this last week to, to celebrate God in nature. Um, and hopefully today, although I hear the forecast for Sunday isn't all that great, but I hope uh, this you've also this week had a chance to celebrate God's nature with your family. This is God's wondrous world.
Thank you, Rod. And let's pray together. Creator God, we lift our voices in praise to you today, singing of your wonders, giving thanks for your grace and your care, celebrating the joys of life that you bless us with, family and friends, new relationships and deeper relationships, new life, transformed lives, reconciliation and restoration. Today we give our thanks, God, for the fathers in our lives. Fatherhood does not come with a manual, and the reality of life teaches us that some fathers excel while others fail. But we ask for your blessing for them all, and for forgiveness where it's needed. We also thank you for mothers and grandparents all those who love and care for children today. Thank you for the time and the energy so many parents are giving to their children to assure them that everything will be okay, that family is important, that each of them is loved and treasured. Bless them with your love, and when they feel like they are not enough, bless them even more. Help them to appreciate both the privilege and the responsibility they bear and teach them to give freely of themselves so that they might discover the happiness and the fulfillment of parenting. Give them wisdom, patience, and dedication, and grant them strength to persevere when children bring tears as well as laughter, or anxiety as well as hope, or pain as well as pleasure. In each of us, Lord, find pleasure when we pursue what is good, when we obey your commands, when we seek your will and respond to your guidance. May you be pleased with us. May we be children who honor you and work to please you as individuals and as a family of faith. We ask you to comfort those who are lonely or grieving. Heal and strengthen those who are sick. Give hope to those who feel discouraged and assure us all of your acceptance and love through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now go into the week and be safe and smart, knowing that you are held constantly and always in the hand of God who loves you and who cares for us all. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Hi, Tensu. I'm going to do a song for you that we know quite well. My faith looks up to thee. I think it's ironic that in times such as right now, when we're going through a lot of trouble, that sometimes our faith takes a hit. And it's probably the time when we need our faith the most. And this song is about just allowing God to provide guidance in your lives. My faith looks up to thee.